All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Cloth Talk Podcast, where it is indeed drip or drown. <laughs> today, we have a special collaboration with us today. We have Aneru, CEO of TB Till Infinity with us today. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing real good, man. Nice to see you guys. Nice to, great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank yes, you for sir. being here on the podcast. We're excited for this episode, bro. Me too. TBCTP. Uh... <laughs> TB, <laughs> Could you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself for for the uh, Cloud Talk audience? Sure. Thank you for that introduction, Will. Um, my name's Aneru Hamadou II. I'm CEO of TB Till Infinity LLC, upcoming apparel brand stemming out of Baltimore, Maryland. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. You can clap yeah, it up so for what? that. Where the applause <laughs> at? Yo, I gotta, I gotta get more. I gotta get on point with with, with this little sound effect. <laughs> Clap it up for the name, everybody. All right. Uh, so one of one of the first things uh, before we get into it, um, we'll just start with some general questions and then get into more specific stuff. But uh, how'd you guys? How'd you come up with the idea to start TV um, and come up with a clothing brand and and your own uh, business? Um, it's kind of a long story. Y'all mind if I tell the whole thing? Go ahead, man. That's what we hear about. Right right so, <laughs> so pretty much, um, like, um, the brand is, fa- uh, the brand is, um, is pretty much owned by six of us, uh, six friends. We graduated from Towson University in 2019, 2020. Um, T, um, TB till infinity, you know, stems from TB. And the TB and TB till infinity means thoroughbred. So the thorough and thoroughbred, you know, it's not necessarily a common term. Some people are familiar to it. Some people aren't. But the thorough in it truly stems from, you know, my childhood and my upbringing. My parents, you know, uh, my parents migrated from Nigeria and um, they raised uh, me and my siblings here in the United States. And one of the kind of philosophies and pillars that they passed on us from a young age is, you know, always be thorough with everything that you do, like the way you treat people. The way you do your schoolwork, the way you do your housework, just the character and kind of person and human being that you are, just always be thorough. And it was, you know, just a pattern. It's something I was always hearing in my head over the years, over the years, over the years. Mm -hmm. And then when I had got to high school, um, I was able to meet three of the um, co-owners of the brand. I was able to meet Eric, um, Marvin and Brahima, and we became friends. And at that point um, in high school, it kind of was becoming um, a movement a little bit, just, you know, funny stuff, just saying it, TB, whatnot. <laughs> then it leapfrogged. That's yeah, like, start. honestly, it really That's was like start. just that. Then it yeah. leapfrogged to college. And then me, um, me, Eric, and Marvin went to Towson uh, um, freshman year, sophomore year. Um, we lived, with, me and Eric lived together. And then um, we eventually lived with Marvin. And then Brahima, another co owner, he, originally went to school in Virginia. He came mm-hmm. to Towson and then the movement picked back up again. So, you know, we were using it for terms. Um, like <laughs> we were just saying it, you know, like we had parties and whatnot and everybody was just calling us TB. And then ar- around the same time too, freshman year, I met Daniel, another one of our co-owners. And, you know, he was heavy on, heavy on board. Like, like like what we were doing, you know, like what I was doing, seeing what I was doing, and mm-hmm. it, it exemplified with him too. And then through Danny, I met Jeff because they were they were roommates and friends, and you know we kind of just slowly but surely, you know, just formed together as as a unit. And mm-hmm. then um, that was kind of freshman, sophomore, junior year ish, and then we were just saying it, putting it on stuff that we were doing, like making intramural basketball teams with it. Like, <laughs> Yo, you this, know, it this, was, is, this is a real bond right here. It's yeah, like, that's, uh, what that's what I'm saying. saying. Yeah. Like, that, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And it was just like I w- we were able to connect and have this union and, you know, like just get along so well because even though it's a philosophy and pillar that my parents passed on to me and my siblings, and I, like it's kind of like they had similar upbringings to me. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like that's how we were all able to, you know, just mesh. And then coming into um kind of senior year, um I was like, dang, like after we had had, I think, our last intramural team or whatever, and like more people, more of us were saying, I'm like, man, like it needs a logo. Mm-hmm. It needs a design. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. the start right there. Exactly. 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 <laughs> so like so like um, one of my friends, my friend Alex, he was real good 
he was real good with Adobe. Um, Jalen, I think you had to have met him. He used to work at the JCC with us. He did security. Um, he's like, I, I yeah, I think I know you. I, I think yeah, I know you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be by the pool all the time. He used to be by the pool all the time. <laughs> he probably he's like, damn, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I, I think I kind of remember. We used to be because short term memory loss. Little, kicking little backstory. In. Backstory. Ru and I used to work at the uh, little JCC. Little yeah, we used to work at the JCC community together. Community center, at, and I worked at the little pool, the rec part. Mm-hmm. So that's how we kind of we became cool with that. So we used to be chopping. Like, I heard, I heard all these ideas back in the day. We used to yeah. be chopping it up. We used to be we talking just, about. We were just chopping it up. Anything like yo, we need to, old, we yeah, need to think old. of a way to get this money by tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah, exactly. I think I remember. Yeah, the J. That was some. Yeah, that was so, some good times. Yeah. So he kind of <laughs> like he kind of like helped me with Adobe. Like had me down pat with Adobe. Show me how to do things on Adobe you know, mess around with shapes and all that. Then that's when I'm like, all right, bet we need a logo. So then I made this, this is the staple mm-hmm. logo. I made mm-hmm. this in Adobe. Then I threw it on, like I had my birthday coming up, my 21st birthday coming up. I threw that on a flyer. Everybody loved it. Like everybody was saying, oh my God, is that the third? Then like we had like a few more events that year and we just kept on throwing the logo on it. Mm-hmm. Then we were just pushing it as a movement, like mm-hmm. whether it was group chat or like whether just saying it to each other, like posting stuff and putting it. And then fast forward, like graduation, I put my stool that I had in my graduation. I put TB till infinity on it, you know, because it was kind of like TB nice. till infinity, you know, like infinite, li- limitless, mm-hmm. you know, put that on the stool. And then like after graduation, you know, um, some of us had already graduated. Some of us didn't. But we are starting to have those conversations, you know, on like how to still have unity, how to like still stay connected and how to continue to uplift each other. So, you know, we we were having those conversations, but then I don't know what it was, but I, I think like one day I can't I'm like, I want to see what this would look like on clothing. Mm-hmm. So like I randomly went to the mall one day and I put this on a hoodie. And I surprised everybody. Like I pulled up, like we had went to a party <laughs> and pulled up with a drip. Yeah, <laughs> like, we what's, had went... that's, what's that <laughs> exclusive? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had went to a party. I pulled up, like show. I think it was only two of us there. It was Eric and then one of our other friends, Eddie. You were there. I pulled up with it, you know. And everybody like, oh, like let's do something. Like that's mm-hmm. cool, you know. Then I'm like, all right, bet. Like so, then I made the Instagram page. So then That's when awesome. I made the Instagram page titled it TV till infinity, and then I put a pickup and I had tagged the page on, on the hoodie. Then that's when everybody is starting to talk about it more. Everybody's starting to talk about it more. How can I get one? How can I get one? Mm-hmm. Wow. And then Brahima, Brahima made got had, had the second, uh, the second piece. He Brahima got like a tech fleece hoodie and then he put this staple logo on it. And everybody mm-hmm. was started asking him like, bro, where you get that from? This, that. <laughs> For real. Yeah, that has so to be that, one of the best feelings. Like, facts. yeah, it's super organic too. people just like genuinely reaching out and mm-hmm. being curious about it. Exactly. Exactly. Then Eric had made one himself. Eric had went and put this on it. And Eric's, it was like a really good fabric. So then once everybody seen that, we starting to have conversations. We like, all right, bet. Like, let's take what we let's take the high school, the college, what we doing outside of everything, us hanging out, our lifestyle, who we stand and who we are as men, our pillars, let's put it into the clothing because how else can you express yourself and, you know, like uplift people in an easy way that mm-hmm. everybody can connect to. Everybody wears clothes. <laughs> it don't matter. It don't matter where you are. Facts. You're going to be like, even you if to. you just, even if you just wear a, a shirt and some underwear, you still wearing clothes. Facts. You feel me? <laughs> so it was like, we were like, all right, bet let's put it with the clothing. So we found a man, you fact that we could work with to, you know, get the clothing out. And then, you know, we just, we formed that to, you know, push that out, put the clothing out. And, you know, here we are, we coming up on two years in it, man. So, you know, that's, that's kind of how we came to be, how the idea came to be. And, you know, we just, we just, we just blessed to have it as what it is right now. And to keep trying to trend upward and go up. Mm-hmm. I'm about to shed a tear. It's like the most organic, right. like <laughs> emotional, amazing come up I've ever heard of, bro. Like, for real. I, I think, that, bro. You guys are meant for this. Like, yeah. it wasn't something you guys forced and you went into. Like, it happened organically. Mm-hmm. Like, all you guys mm-hmm. met each other organically. The ideas came up organically. And that's 
that's something really, really cool to see. I remember, uh, Jalen, I don't, I don't know if you remember when we first started having our ideas about the podcast and coming up with the logo. Like, that was one of the best moments. Like, yeah, that's, that's so that's so fun. It's so fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to say. It's kind of, it's like, it's kind of similar to, to, uh, cloth talk and what we did it's just it all starts with a with an idea with a conversation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i think we're going to get into this a little bit but all, that's all it takes is just just starting like you'll talk about it and that's all people do is talk about it and it don't take much to just get started so we had the idea and they were like yo like we said you know in past episodes um we need people to people need to hear what you know people need to hear these conversations because we just be cracking up talking about whatever so we're like yeah <laughs> exactly. we, know, we know people out here can relate so yeah i think that's all you know that's what it is you just find a group of like-minded individuals i think that's that's the most like that's the most important part all y'all had the uh-huh. same drive um mm-hmm. the same yeah, ambition that's... so i think yeah that's like will said that's just like a perfect mess and the six people and then all, everybody's just like, yo, let's, uh, this is something we need to do. Like, we got to do this. Yeah. 100%, 100%. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you were able to tell that whole story because yeah. I was wondering how, because it started off with the friendships and the group mm-hmm. and uh, exactly. just having the tags and then how did that transition into clothing? So it just, it was just organic. Like one day you were just like, yeah, I'm going to just put this on a hoodie and then people 100, started A hundred percent, bro, because it was just like people asking about it and it's like, I, we got, I got this logo right here. And it's kind of like we having these conversations and, you know, like, it's kind of like, you know, how, like, it's who we were and who we stand is like to be. But don't mm-hmm. you know how sometimes in your own, like, friend groups, like, maybe you and Jalen, like, maybe y'all have something that's like bro code in between yeah, y'all, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like, <laughs> like, let's, like, let's do, let's do something with it. And, you know, like, just take it a step further. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So when I did that, I'm just like, I, I just want to see how the fellas going to react to it. And yeah, you know the re- response was the response was great. Like yeah. that's the re- that's the that's was, awesome. The response bro. was great. That's awesome. And we all from different places. Like I'm like um I grew up Baltimore. So did Eric. So did Marvin. So did Brahima. Daniel's from Montgomery County. Jeff mm-hmm. is from PG. Mm-hmm. So we all kind of you know from different <laughs> things and places in Maryland. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Um, I forgot what I was about to ask. Oh, the the dynamic between you guys, because mm-hmm. normally it's hard to it's hard to get people organized and like working towards the same goal. It's hard to even get people on a vacation together. Like, no, facts. Five six people. So how how do, how does that dynamic kind of go? Do you guys work well together? Do you have like a process that you guys go through? Or that's a good question, Will. Um, I mean, we all have roles. Mm-hmm. So because we all have roles, we know how to support each other and how to function as a bit, not only just a brand, but as a business and as, as a conglomerate. Um, we just function within our roles, hold each other accountable and, you know, just try to keep the brand ahead um, at the end of the day. I mean, of course, it's not easy. Everybody has different personalities, but we know mm-hmm. what it, we know what it was when we signed up and we know where we're trying to go mm-hmm. and we know what we have to do. So, it, you know, it kind of just is with that. But it's definitely, it, it, as you said, very spot on. It's different dynamics, you know, because like <laughs> it's different. Not it's, because a, it's a lot I of met, cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I met I met like if you think about the different time places in which I met Eric and Marvin in high school and then I had also met Brahima. Cause me and Brahima played basketball together, but me, um, but like me, Brahima, Eric, we didn't really start hanging as like a unit unit till college. And then I was cool with Daniel and Jeff before they were cool with everybody else. So, you know, like it all had to be like a mix in and yeah. it just mixing in it and it meshed like, like, so like it just meshed in so naturally, so naturally. Like I remember this one conversation I had with Daniel, one of the co-owners, I think it was in like sophomore year when like, <laughs> it was like the first time everybody is kind of like met each other and me and him kind of like gave each other that look like, like, you know, like organically, like one day, like this really could be like a unit or something. Yeah, I was telling yeah, him yeah. like, I feel the same exact way, but as long as it just happens organically, mm-hmm. like these relationships form organically and you know, they did. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. So there's, I feel like towards the beginning of that process, you know, going from like idea to like execution, there's a lot of like roadblocks that happen during that time of like creating a brand or starting a business or any kind of venture. Like what was, 
what are some of like the hardest things that you guys encountered on that on that path and on that journey? Um, there was a lot of like I said, there was a lot of initial curiosity on what we were doing. Mm. People asking, "What is that? Like, what are y'all saying? What did you <laughs> need?" You know, like I remember when we like there was this one time we had an event at Marvin's place and we had the logo on there. We we're just saying "TV this TV." Girls asking, oh, "What is that?" Like. <laughs> guys that ain't know us like what is tb and then we're just we're just trying to tell them and just ex- explain it and you know like people didn't really understand so uh-huh. it was just a matter of what we were doing um what we are and like um what we're doing what we are and then we started putting it on clothing it's like okay what do our products look like so you know just kind of uh-huh. working through all of that because it's like when you're coming out with something new and, it, and like you're saying things that like kind of aren't the norm and like especially when it's in college and this was just at the initial standpoint, you know, in college, like the masses try to click up, you know, resonate yeah. towards cloud and whatnot, you mm-hmm. know, like, you know, so that was kind of that thing. And it's like when you're on the outside and you have your own thing going on because yeah, we had our own thing. Because be we had our own, exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> we had our own thing going on, like. You know, that can somehow be perceived as like weird because like when every like let's say like it's a I mean y'all was in college. Well, let's say it's like a cookout or something. Yeah. And, you know, and it's a cookout, everybody go to their areas and whatnot. Like we come in, we roll into the cookout. We we our own area. We come yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all roll up you, as a unit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like it was a lot of initial curiosity on what we're doing, who we are, what are we about. I say that's that was kind of a roadblock because now moving into the clothing, it's like, okay, they have those questions. And now it's like, okay, what do the products look like? Mm-hmm. So initially starting off, it's like, okay, we want to get these products out. We want them to look good. And we want like kind of our message to show in our clothing, like mm-hmm. people to understand what our, what our message is and you know, what, our, what we're about um, as a brand, our, <clears throat> our, as a brand, our mission is really to inspire all generations to innovate and always trend upward and have optimism. So, you know, we kind of was just trying to push that and showcase that within all of our clothing. Um, So the roadblock with that was just kind of like getting people to understand that, getting people to, you know, take us serious Mm -hmm. and also not like getting offended and not getting too caught up in it because people were always going to have their opinions. anyway. So, (laughs) you know, that was kind of that. And then um, another thing was, like you guys had just mentioned, like Will said with dynamics, you know, just balancing friendship and then now trying to create a brand slash business. Mm-hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, like us being young black entrepreneurs, we mm-hmm. have set models and examples in society on what we can look at, but it's not necessarily a book on, you know, or if yeah. they even if there even is a book, how many of us are gonna read it? Yeah, you know what I mean. Thanks. So it was just, it's just that kind of thing. Like, so those were the, those are the biggest kind of roadblocks. So just kind of, you know, like people trying to figure out what are we doing, who we are, what our products look like, and then balancing, you know, the friendship element with the business slash brand element. Yeah. I think we probably, I feel like we kind of in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Just the other day, like, they like. <laughs> uh, like, we you have know, these conversations constantly. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. You always posting. You always posting your podcast. I'm like, wait, you really serious about that? I'm like, uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, what you, what you, yeah. what you want me to, what you want me to do? All right, yeah, so people, I don't know. I guess when you first starting out, people look at you like not as a. I would. I don't want to say a joke, mm-hmm. but for lack of a better term, it's just like, oh, they just that's just for play. Like, mm-hmm. no, like we dead, we dead serious. We out here trying to, we trying to get it. But it's cool though, cause exactly. we <laughs> we're all in the same boat. Like when we actually when we on, we're gonna look back like we told you so. Like I mean, you see, exactly. I ain't no joke. <laughs> exactly, ain't no joke exactly. before, huh? Right. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that initial <laughs> stage of like getting the branding and the messaging together is mm. it's hard because like you have an idea of what you want to do what you want to say, but you don't know whether people will resonate with it or not. And like how, exactly. how people respond. And it's important, right? Like you're doing this for yourself, but at the same time you need to like sell your clothing or we need to have people tune into the podcast. So you mm-hmm. have to have that feedback loop where it's like, okay, this went well, this didn't go well. So yeah, that's something we're still trying to figure out, you know, ourselves for our brand as well. Like we're into a bunch of different things. So we're, we're having different videos and different topics and different guests. Cause we, 
touch on a bunch of subjects. We're not trying to stay, um, you know, boxed into one niche. So it's, I feel like it's a learning process, just figuring out, you know, your brand and what you want to be about and how you want to be portrayed uh, to the public. So I think, I think that was definitely a natural part of it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And um, that's good on like how y'all talk about different topics to, you know, like connect with different crowds, kind of a little bit to touch on, you know, like how me and Jalen and how we became real cool. He, he touched on it, how mm-hmm. we met at the JCC working on the JCC. Like what y'all do with cloth, cloth thought, like, this is why I like I like your podcast so much because those con- those type of conversations that me and him used to have all the time, like just geeking, like yeah. just breaking <laughs> bread, like whether it's sports, you know, like whether it's stuff with school, you Everything. know, like whether it's stuff we going through, mm-hmm. friends, family, whatever, like that's the type of conversations like we were having, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like y'all having those same conversations. So, you know, that's real good because it's it's how many of those type of dynamics, like us, like at the JCC people working or just regular people just having those type of conversations and then y'all having them that can connect and is relatable with so many people. So mm-hmm. even though it may be hard, like it's sometimes hard with, to connect with people and there are going to be those off people. Like Jalen said, like, Oh, you taking it serious. Like right. it's going to be people <laughs> like that, but uh-huh. we just got to, you know, keep doing what we're doing because like, we're not faking it. Like it's actually what we enjoy to do and mm-hmm. it's our real life. So, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I feel like as long as you're being your authentic self, like, you can't you can't really go wrong. Like you'll there'll be people out in the world that enjoy what you do and what you're mm-hmm. portrayed as and mm-hmm. they'll connect with you that way. So and you find you find your true audience that way too. Like just being yourself, you're gonna connect yep. with the audience that was meant for you, not something, you know, when you're trying to be something you're not, then you'll find an audience that, you know, is not gonna be connected with you for the long term. So I think I think that is good. Um, do you have any like advice for, you know, people wanting to start their own brand or their own business, um, especially for like minority business owners or minority entrepreneurs um, going forward? Um, Kind of my best advice would be if you have a good idea of something, like whatever it is, and like you have people that are behind you, like even if it's one person, like let's say you have an idea and it's something you love and you talk about it and you just talk about it with your mom, your dad, and like your girlfriend, or you talk about it with your brother. And those people are behind you and they're telling you like, hey, Will, you have a great idea. Hey, Jalen, you have a great idea. Hey, Nate, you have a great idea. Like, go for that. Just mm-hmm. go for it. Just take take the risk and do it. Because at the end of the day, if you fail, which you won't, if you put your if you put your all into it, mm-hmm. you've already at least tried to create something from your for for, for yourself. Mm -hmm. which is what 99.9% of other people aren't doing. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like, look at me and look at us at TB. Like, it all started with the philosophy of being thorough, uplifting others, just being diligent. Like, Like, if you told me 20 years ago, my mom was telling me, like, when I got home, I didn't tie my shoes and (laughs) I went to the sink and I didn't finish washing the dishes and my, and my sister was trying to tell me how to do my homework. And I was being rude to her that my mom was telling me like, be thorough. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. I like, if you told me 20 years ago that that was, that it was going to come to this, I wouldn't have even, you know, expected it, but I had an idea. I seen something that, you know, could leapfrog and, you know, had so much potential to, you know, become like an empire and just be bigger than all of us and touch so many people. So, you know, that's why we decided to take the risk. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I would just say you have an idea, you have people behind you, you know, just just go for it, just go for it. And then the second piece of advice that I would say with that is that it's definitely like a lot of things that people try to do. And um, I speak this to a lot of, you know, young entrepreneurs and, you know, um, young black people and all people really like if you have an idea you're trying to do something and you want to do it the right way and you want it to move in an efficient type of place and time like some people do stuff and you know they want to do a big like maybe some people will be like oh i want to be an artist i want to be a graphic designer and they take their mm-hmm. time doing stuff little stuff here and there but like something like a podcast something like a clothing brand something like a nail business or something like a hair business you need a team at the end of the day Mm -hmm. you need a team at you need a team at the end of the day like even if you're 100 even if you don't have a job outside of what you're doing on the side and you're committed to that 100 
okay, you're going to need somebody on the back end to help you with your financials. Okay, mm-hmm. you're going to need somebody to help you with your advertising. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're going to need ambass- – like, you need a team at the end of the day. So I would say form a team. That would be my best advice to um, all any young people trying to start something. You have a great idea, go for it. If you fail, which you most likely won't, at least you try to create something for yourself. You did something, you know, against all odds. And don't fall into the – and then also, second piece, don't fall into the concept of, oh – if I have a team, if I have too many people, it's going to be too many people eating from the pot or my <laughs> ideas and my mm-hmm. vision is, is going to get skewed and so on and so forth. Form a team. Those people that are behind you, that they fall in line with that idea, those might be people that you want put that you might want to put on your team. Like at the end of the day, at the, in the team, everybody has a role that you know to play. Like you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody has a different personality. Like, so I just say those are my two pieces of advice. And those are two things that people I feel like are two huge drawbacks with people I talk to like, oh, I'm afraid. I don't have the time. I don't know if anybody's really going to like it. Like you waste so much time thinking about that. You never do it. And yeah. then the second thing is like, OK, I'm going to do it all by myself. And people get overwhelmed and it takes them so long. And it's like, OK, you have your mom. You had your mom behind you that told you it was a good idea. You had your brother behind you. What if your mom could have helped you mail some of your stuff out? Mm-hmm. And what if your brother, when you at work, your brother could have been making calls and, you know, typing stuff up for you, mm-hmm. you know? And it's yeah. like, okay, you just starting out. These people, they believe in your idea and they resonate with you. They're not going to be asking you for money. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's like, why right. not put them on that team? And it's like, when you get somewhere where you're going to have to pay people, wouldn't you rather put that bread in those people's pockets? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of my thing, my advice to those people. I think, yeah, yeah I think we, uh, we kind of touched on it earlier. Like, I think it all, it all it comes full circle. Like you, mm-hmm. um, uh, fuck. I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what, hold on. Let we me, got, let we me got, got one clip up. right there, baby. Let's go. Let me. <laughs> hold on. What, what, what were you about to say? I know you were about to say something. Let me let me gather my thoughts. Um. Yeah, I was I was going to say those are two really good pieces of advice that I just recently learned, like, the past couple years, like, it's one thing because you kind of know these things in your head. You'll hear sayings every now and then watching TV or, you know, reading books and stuff like that. But to actually like execute on it, like it's it's easier said than done. I think for your first for your first answers, like it was beautiful um, because that was something we struggled with for a long time, too, like. The podcast hasn't been the only idea that we've had, you know, Mm -hmm. me and Jalen, like I've had my own goals and aspirations. Jalen's has his own goals and aspirations. And we've had these ideas coming up since we were little, like elementary school, middle school. And Mm -hmm. it's like, how many of those things that we didn't act on could have like changed somebody's life or could have put us in a different place or, you know, taken us on a different path, you know? Yeah. So I think, you know, it's super important to just go after it. I had to make a decision with myself. Like, I'd rather try and attempt to do something and have it not go so well or have it quote unquote fail. I don't think there's any such thing as failure anymore, but um, rather than not trying at all and having the regret of not trying and not knowing if it could have worked out, like, Mm -hmm. because you can never answer that question. Like, you'll be 67 years old, like, damn, like, what if we started that Claw Talk podcast? Yeah, we don't, no regrets. Yo, <laughs> you'll exactly. never know the answer to that because you can't go back in time. Right, you can't right. you can't reverse those decisions. So I think that's good. And the second part, I'm learning a lot more now. Uh, mm-hmm. Trusting your vision and your aspirations into other people, into a team, because yeah. I've notoriously tried to do way too many things by myself. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's 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 has something to do with like a type A personality being a little bit OCD. You want you think you know the right answer to everything or how everything should be all the time. And it's like your perspective can be balanced with other people's perspectives. Like, yeah. Oh, you think the email should be written this way for the TB, uh, you know, customer support or something like that. But it's like, no, if you have somebody on your team, be like, Oh, we can write it like this. 
you can format it like that. Like, oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. So right. having a team that can support you and balance uh, your ideas and, um, you know, go through that creative process with you, I think is super important. And you move way faster. Multiple yeah, exactly. eyes. It's just like, it's just like work and, yeah. and our actual jobs. Like we work as a team because like I might review a document where there's a mistake and who, whoever didn't catch that mistake. But because he had another set of eyes on it, I call it. They like, oh, I didn't even see that, you know. So exactly, that's why exactly. it's important to uh, you know collaborate. We mm -hmm. talk about that all the time. What I was going to say earlier, just essentially, is like Ru said and Will. Like, if you have something you want to do, then just you know, just go do it. Like, don't think about it. Do it, and just like just like call talk, you learn as you go. I think that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. Like. You, when you're 60 and 70, like we just say, you don't want to be regretting, like, damn, I should have really, I should have really started that uh, clothing brand or that podcast or like I'm, I stream now like video games and I've been talking about that yeah. since, <laughs> since we were like, what was it? We were like seven, eight years old. I'm like, yo, right. Like, imagine if we did that, we could have been like phase clan. Yeah. Today. Yeah. <laughs> So, it's, it's, it's not too late. It's not too late. I see facts. you doing it, bro. I seen you tweeting about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it was, it's the origins of that have gone way back. Like there's a YouTube video. I don't know if y'all be able to find it, but I think I might've have it unlisted. It's like me and Jalen playing guitar here, yeah. like vlogging it. Mm -hmm. Like we're like eight, nine years old or some squeaky voices and all like, mm -hmm. but that's like, you can see our attention was in that direction. Like, we yeah. were kind of made to do content or mm -hmm. like creating content in that way. Like that's something that uh, we were attracted to even at that young age. Like you see, you see those things now when you're older and more mature and have that perspective, but it's hard to know when you're like younger. So hopefully people will be able to take that away from this conversation. Yeah. So. And real, real quick, I think uh, another important thing is when you're doing something like Will and I talk about this all the time, like we, We'll post, like, when we post, we're not posting for, you know, the attention and for the likeness of others. We're posting because uh -huh. this is what we want to do. Like, I post, and I don't uh -huh. even check to see who looks at my post. And it's crazy. I'm going to say, <laughs> for y'all watching, like, when I'm on vacation, I had 200-something views on my story. But when I post my <laughs> podcast, it's only it's like 25 views. Like, no, nah, <laughs> so... But I don't, you know, I don't. I'm just saying, I, I do see that. So <laughs> forget all y'all. I know who my real friends are. But anyway, uh, <laughs> like, but I'm not posting it for views and likes. I'm posting it because I believe, you know, like Will said, this is what this is what we're supposed to be doing. And Rue, I know you, uh, you and your five guys, TB. I know y'all believe this is what you're supposed to be doing. So like, we're just. It's tunnel vision. That's what I wanted to say. Like exactly outside exactly. all the noise. Oh, you really taking mm -hmm. this serious? Like whatever you, you, I know you got an idea. Like you, you, you should take be taking your ideas serious too. Don't be mad because I'm doing like I'm doing what I want to do. You could do the same thing. I think that's why people be mad. Like <laughs> they see you chasing your dreams, but it's so easy to just do the same thing. Like you could be like me. Don't be mad that I'm doing what I want to do. But yeah. Exactly, exactly. And just to um kind of add one more thing that's mm. big that I forgot, an advice thing, kind of like a 2.5. Sacrifice mm. is another big piece of advice. Like, <laughs> I really didn't understand what sacrifice was until I started doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I really didn't understand it at all. Like, sacrifice, like, you're going to have to miss some birthdays. You're going to mm -hmm. make some people, you're going to make some loved ones upset. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have to, you know, pass up some offers and you're going to have some late nights. Like you might do like sometimes with, with my job, I do at 830 to like 7 p.m. And mm -hmm. then I have an hour, where I have 30 minutes to get ready and we have a meeting for the brand at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. we, finish, we might finish that meeting, you know, at 10. I still got to eat dinner. I still got to go <laughs> to the gym. I still got to, you know, do kind of stuff. So it's just a lot of sacrifice. And another drawback is people don't want that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. People don't want to take that sacrifice. They don't know what it is. Some people, some people want it. They'll say they, say they want it. They might be consistent, you know, for a little bit, like 10 days a month, but then <laughs> they, you know, they just stop being consistent. They mm -hmm. stop wanting it. So you got to want it bad. You got to be willing to make that sacrifice. And 
you know, like it's it's gonna it's 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 gonna collide with other aspects of your life. It might collide with work. It might collide with you missing a vacation. But when you put the time in, you know, it's it's gonna be rewarding, and you really inspire people. Like it's been so many people, you know, that through TB I've been able to inspire. Like my sister started doing, you know, content creation, a lifestyle brand for women, motherhood. Awesome. You know, mm-hmm. all just off the strength of, you know, kind of, you know, my brand and what we formulated. And she's saying, oh, this is something that I really wanted to do for a minute. So just seeing my little brother able to do it and be so successful, like it kind of inspired me. And that made me feel good because, mm-hmm. like, it's so many people from generations of our past that are just stuck in that. OK, go to school, mm-hmm. get a nine to five, build up your 401k. Mm-hmm. Take your kids through school, work to a retirement, retire when you're 60 to 70, and then enjoy life then. There's so many people with that mindset. So when I hear my sister saying that, that makes me so happy, you know, mm-hmm. like that makes me feel so good, especially for my nieces and nephews. Like, wow, like, you know, like that they could really have a different dynamic than, you know, what we had growing up. And that's no knock against the nine to five and whatnot, because that's what a lot of our parents did. And that's how we got here today. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's no it's no knock on that. But and it's also really good with, you know, the sacrifice, like my parents and my family able to see that sacrifice. And, you know, when they start to have those conversations and, you know, and say, oh, my son is doing this and whatnot. Like I try to tell them, I tell them, like, you don't have to necessarily tell them, tell people that the first thing you say to be like, oh, your son's working this way. Like, let them know that your son has ownership. Your son formulated a brand like your son has something that he's trying to pass on to generations of our family and then all of us that own a brand we're trying to pass it on to their generations that we're trying to touch multiple communities so uh, mm-hmm. you know the younger generation and anybody not even younger generation all people you know you could be 50 and start an acting career today and be successful mm-hmm. so you know just take uh, just take that from that you know forming a team um you know taking an idea and run with it and also just sacrifice so yeah yeah yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yo, pay, piggybacking off the sacrificing, um, I've kind of learned that like, if you're really passionate about something and you have a goal that you're trying to reach, um, you obviously have to spend less time with other people. You know, less time doing the things you used to be able to do. The people who actually love you and actually want to see you happy will not get offended, and they'll mm-hmm. be happy for you. Like, like your family, close friends, they'll know like, oh, Jalen and Will, they're podcasting. So I know he's probably not going to respond for, you know, the next couple of days because they're busy this weekend recording, yada, yada. They're not going to take it personally. And then when you chop it up and you see him later on, it's it's all love. So I've learned that, you know, the people who are actually your friends and actually your family and actually love you and actually want the best for you to see you happy, they won't mind you sacrificing little things here and there not being there certain occasions or checking in every day now you only check in like once a week or every other day so they they'll they'll stand by you and support you so that's that's something i've learned for sure yeah Fetch. just i think uh well both of y'all i know both of y'all work hard will's like will i it's still crazy to me like <laughs> He don't, working, don't say it, bro. Don't don't do it, bro. He be, he be working like cra- crazy hours, so <laughs> I commend. But both of y'all, I commend both of y'all because we still like all three of us still currently still work, you know, nine to five jobs. So just to take take the time to chase your dreams, essentially promote a brand, run a brand, be a CEO of a brand, be co you know co host of a podcast. Like we will could be like. I don't want like I don't want to do this like I don't have you know I don't have the time on my hands because like I, when I say crazy hours that man be working like ten to ten and then I'd be like yo right. trying to pod he'd be like let's get it so, <laughs> like I think, I think sacrifice yeah sacrifice is definitely uh, another key because you know ten I feel like you know five ten years from now we'll all be in a completely different you know we'll be in a completely different space so that you put the time exactly. in now it, it, it'll pay off in the you know in the future yeah don't don't get me wrong there are times and days where i'm like fuck this like i don't <laughs> want to do this shit anymore like <laughs> i think those, those are the those are the character building days you know like you do Definitely. it because you have to anyway like it's, mm-hmm. it's like going to the gym like i don't mm-hmm. want to go to the gym four days a week but on that fourth day i'm gonna be like damn i gotta go like i'm supposed to yeah go today, so um yeah it's 
And the thing with it too, we're all, everybody kind of has to start. I don't know if you're lucky and you start off in like middle school or high school before you start working full time and you pop off with an idea, you may not experience this, but a lot of us start these ideas while we're working full time. Like mm-hmm. we have a job, we have a nine to five. There's energy and like mental capacity spent on that nine to five. Like a lot of people don't take that into consideration. Like waking up at a certain time, dealing with people in meetings and your work or whatever, by the time it's four or five o'clock, you really don't want to do anything. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's easy mm-hmm. to just like sit in the crib or, you know, turn on Netflix or That's whatever. It. Zone out Go for relax. the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's kind of fucked up, but the process starts off at the hardest possible situation. Like me and Jalen talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Like you start off having to work a nine to five. And then after that, you know, fitting everything else into your schedule, fitting the pod, going to the gym, eating, cooking mm-hmm. dinner, uh, keeping up with family and friends. Like then you have to squeeze all of that into like four or five hours. And let's hope that you get sleep at the end of the night, you know? Right. 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 <laughs> and so that sucks. That part of it sucks. But if you're, if you have the passion for it, you put the time and energy and you're consistent and you start making that residual income and you have these different ideas that are bringing money in, then you can quit your job. Then exactly. you don't have that nine to five. And now you're doing this full time. Now that 40 hours is dedicated to the stuff you were doing part time. So it's way easier after that. Uh-huh. So 100%. It's, it's kind of messed up, but you start off at the hardest part of the journey. So I would say to anybody, don't get discouraged that it feels hard or shitty or you're really tired and you're not motivated to like work on your brand or your, uh, your business or streaming or making content at six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night because you, you had a long day at work. Like we all feel that way. We just kind of push through it in the hopes that we know that in the future, it won't always be like this. Like we won't always have to work the nine to five and do this on the side. Like this will be my full time thing eventually. So. Um, we, talk, we talk about that all the time. Like, oh, imagine, rule. Imagine if you could just wake up, go to I don't know where you like. You know, you said you made just for example, you made your logo on Adobe. Just imagine you wake up, go to Adobe, make a little design real quick, and then you could just go on with the rest of your day because you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about yeah. work. <laughs> that would feel so sweet, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That would feel or so we, sweet, bro. Instead of like waking up. And then even though it's remote or like back when like we were in office just waking up, oh my God, I gotta run to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I gotta run to work. I gotta be on time. Yeah. Oh, if I'm on time, then I gotta make I'm I'm logged in, I gotta make sure I'm set. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I forgot something in my car. Or, <laughs> oh man, I'm hungry, I didn't get enough to eat. Yeah. Or oh man, I can't be looking on my phone. Right. Uh, right. you know my team leader, he he walking by me like just not having to worry about having those type of problems and just being able to 100% put it into yourself. Like, mm-hmm. well, you said that perfect. Like, put the hours, put the time into this. Like, man, like, you might have to do 40 hours at your job and then do 40 hours in the cloth talk, mm-hmm. 40 hours <laughs> in the TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's 80 hours through the week spent, you know, making your main income, your main salary, mm-hmm. that job, you, that career. Then also, you know, you send that same amount of time your entrepreneurship, you know, because you got to put that time in. And, you know, a lot of startups, when you first start up, you're not going to be making what Nike's making, making what Adidas is making <laughs> or making yeah, what, not even close. you know, million dollars worth of game is making or full send boys or, you know, like, yeah. So it's all a process and it's a journey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that means – Cloth Talk Pie, Cloth Talk as a brand has made a whopping zero dollars. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need y'all to go subscribe. Go go yes. become a patron. Donations. Yeah, we need some back, gifts and donations. Back. Donations. Go subscribe back to the to Patreon. Guys. Stop subscribe playing. To the guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, you start off with the least amount of time and the least amount of revenue with all yep. these ideas, with all these ventures. So it gets it gets easier. I think mm-hmm. that's that's the the light, the silver lining around the cloud. Like it gets easier from here. You start off at the hardest part. So, um, yeah, we we can all relate to that. Do you do you think there's like, do you have like a favorite part or like, you know, your favorite thing about being an entrepreneur and owning your own brand and you know, commanding that sort of presence? That's funny because I was going to ask y'all that question, but um, <laughs> I answered that first. So, I mean, I say kind of like 
my favorite part about that is just having something to be able to call my own. Mm-hmm. Just having something to be able to call our own, like going, like waking up and saying, "Oh, I'm I'm about to go to I'm about to go to Jalen's party. I'm about to go to Will's event. Okay, what am I going to wear? Boom." Three fourths of my outfit, <laughs> TV. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like think about how many people can say that though. How that's... many people? How many people can say that doing like it, it's just that? That's just really what you know, like what the greatest no, feeling is. Hard. Feeling is to me, and then like another thing is like I come from you know a family a background of my my parents. They migrated from Nigeria. My parents are Nigerian, like real Nigerians. So, like, you know, like, go to school, become a doctor, become a lawyer, or have a really good career. And then, <laughs> you know, being able to brag about that. I remember one conversation I had with my dad one day. I'm sitting and, like, you know, I'm sitting telling my dad, like, Dad, I really have something to pass on to other generations. Like, I really have something to pass on to other generations of, of our family. Like, it's, it, it, it like, it, this is like, a clothing brand, an empire, this can leapfrog into so many things. It's more than a house, you mm-hmm. know, like it's more than money. It's mm-hmm. more than, you know, cars, you know, like this is it's clothing. Everybody can wear it. Like, you know, any any demographic from a newborn baby fresh out the womb to somebody <laughs> got the TV on going in the casket. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm so serious, bro. Like, just, hey, be, just all drown. of us being able exactly. to say that, just having something we could call our own, knowing that we can pass it on to other generations and then just impacting communities in so many other ways that we didn't before. Like, now we're able to do clothing drives, attach the name of TB to it. Okay. TB, okay, we're coming here, clothing drive. We want to pass our stuff. Okay, people now know what our brand is about. You know who we resonate with, what we stand for. Clothing drive. We're touching different people. We're learning about how these people got to this, got to this point. Telling them our stories, hoping that we can inspire them, hoping that we can help them, and then just networking. You know, meeting different types of people, like the masterclass event that mm-hmm. you guys, um, you guys, you mm-hmm. know, thank you guys for coming and participating in that. Networking with other brands, you know, whether it's doing podcasting or you know, money management or candles, nails, self-defense, just networking with these different types of brands, having a brand you can network with other people on, build these other positive relationships, Um, you know, being able to do that. And then like just being able to inspire all people, like we really want to touch other, all communities. We really want to touch all people. And, you know, one thing with me while I'm even in, in the finance field outside of TB is, you know, to be able to help families and, you know, like situations, like kind of like myself, like how my parents migrated and I'm the youngest of five and my parents put all me and my five siblings through school. Not everybody is able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even with TB, it mirrors the same type of thing, being able to, you know, just, just help inspire people. Like, and it's even funny because like, I was telling the older person about this one, about TB one day and (laughs) when I talked to them and even like one of my sisters, and she was like, you guys are role models. And then I'm, I'm really sitting here thinking and looking at it like I'm only 24 years old. Like, but no, like we really are role. We really mm-hmm. are role models, mm-hmm. you know, like people look up to us and people look up to you guys as well. You know, like with you mm-hmm. guys doing the podcast, talking like there's some little kids right now that are seven, eight, nine years old. I don't, I don't think they, they don't do Guitar Hero anymore. <laughs> there, there's some little kids, seven, eight, nine years old, that's, cho- that's chopping it up, you know, talking about, I don't even know what TV, what little kid TV show is big right now, but yeah. talking about some, some little kid show, chopping it up, talking about, oh, they want to talk about this on a platform and have a, youth, like, it's, it, and it's, and it's just with this new generation, it's so different now, like, I go mm-hmm. on YouTube. It's a few content creators I follow. They already got a YouTube page for their kid that's four years old, and mm. the kid is is is, <laughs> is streaming like on the game. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's like it's like damn, like how my sister and the old man was telling me like we really are we really are role models. Like it's kids that's that's well, that like you guys don't even know. It, it mm-hmm. could be a kid in China right now watching y'all pop, watching the Cloth Talk podcast, saying damn, you know. We want in a few years, boom, we want to do this. We want to be just like Jalen. We want to be just like Will. And, you know, and that's why we really, um, at TB, our alma mater, Towson University, we really want to touch back with the school because, like, mm-hmm. it's it, like it's just with clothing and fashion and, you know, what we exemplify and represent and the messages are just the motivation and inspiration. Like, with a, like we really want, we really want to touch people, you know, like, mm-hmm. 
especially just even mentioning Towson, our alma mater, like there's so many times people in college and you guys can relate, you know, just being in the dorms, going through classes, your grade's not the best way you want to be. <laughs> and, you know, stuff not going, stuff not going for you, you know, like you need some, some encouragement, you need mm-hmm. some motivation, you need something to inspire you. So, you know, like, why not us? Why not TB? So that's, that's kind of, you know, what my favorite part about it is. That's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I, uh, it's, it's funny. We always think we have like, no, we have little to no impact on like other people. Cause there's so, there's billions of people walking around. It's easy to, you know, look at celebrities and actors and like rappers and athletes and feel like, Oh, like what is my impact on the world right now? Yeah. It's like, you really have no idea. Like you could have impacted and touched somebody. Maybe it was a family member or a friend or they saw what you were doing and you inspired somebody to do something. And then 30 years from now, they have like a fortune 500 company and they're giving back and have foundations and things like that. You never know, man. Mm-hmm. You never know. And we've, we've already, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys at TV have had the same experience. We've already had people reach out to us with our little audience that we have right now, they've already reached out and been like, yo, like your podcast really helped me. Uh, I really relate to the things you guys are talking about and it made me feel safe. It made me feel like I wasn't alone. Like that shit. That's great. Bro, that's great. I got chill. I got chills right now. I ain't gonna lie. Cause that's, yeah, that's, that's crazy yo, to think about. Yeah. It's, it's one of the best feelings in the world. So never, never underestimate the power of being you and mm-hmm. like going after what you have because you really have no idea who you're affecting like you you're bringing value to this earth and you don't even know it so a hundred percent a hundred percent and like i really feel what you said with that will like how somebody how somebody reached out and said that to you guys like we got a lot of positive feedback from the master class event that we did that you guys were a part of Mm -hmm. just (laughs) adding value positive value to the community you know like given like us what we're doing us startup businesses startup creators giving up like having a space be able to come and break bread and collaborate and help each other like put money in each other's pockets like that's just great and it's funny how like people see you know upcoming brands and startups like us doing that and people you know like how we talked about the perceptions and whatnot when you start up and people saying oh like this your pie you taking it serious right. people will see a master class <laughs> and people will see tv till infinity call talk podcast uh collaborating together and they'll be like oh master class what's that like oh like what are y'all doing y'all join up and i'm sitting here scratching my head but people will see Nicki minaj and <laughs> rihanna or they see cardi b and meg Stein, or they'll see jay-z meek mill yo Gotti, or they'll see robert Kraft, michael rubin They'll see Elon Musk, Mm -hmm. Bill Bill Gates, um, Jeff Bezos. They'll see all these people collaborate and break bread and talk about these things at the same table. I'm sitting here like, what do you think those people are doing? What do you think they're talking about? Like, like, how do you think they got there? Mm -hmm. You know? So that's that's, that's just something with that. But just being able to provide those positive value. And it's great to hear it when people can actually see that value and appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think that's it's the same. Well, I don't know. I don't know about Will, but I feel like it's the same. The same for me. I think. Uh, just I don't know that. I feel that's that's a good feeling. Like even with a small audience, which I know is going to grow, just to have somebody be like, "Yo, I you know I was listening to the pod on the way to work." And it makes <laughs> yeah. I'm like yo, like really, like you what you choose to listen to us at seven in the morning when you're on the way to work. That's tough. Right. <laughs> that's t- that's real tough. Right. Uh, like they they could be doing anything else right now, but mm-hmm. they, they chose to sit for thirty forty five minutes and listen to what we had to say. Like that's crazy to me. Like, yeah, that's crazy. definitely. But yeah, I think uh, we we were to what we asking next. We can cut this. No, up. real, real quick, though, real uh, quick, though, uh, y'all, y'all each tell me what's what's your favorite part that you mm. haven't mentioned already. I know we kind of got into it just now, but you haven't yeah, mentioned. We've been having already. a great conversation so far. So, yeah. 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 if we you're still over. here, <laughs> drop a like. Go check out TV Till Infinity. Mm-hmm. All their yeah. links will be down below. All their socials will be down below. Um, we're giving you guys nuggets here. Like, shout out to Nehru. Definitely, um, man. We giving you a lot of gems. Yeah. I'm we trying to we think, Jalen. I don't know if you have anything <laughs> on the top of your head. Well, Ruth said we were going to go over to 30. 
Nah, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, with, I'm fine with that though. Because um, again, the combo has been great. Um, that I mean, I gotta I gotta think about that too. Because I like it was the same for me. Like just having something to call my own. Um, but I guess I don't know. I guess for me, it's cool to see. Well, I'm doing obviously I'm doing a, a podcast with my brother from another mother. That may, that might be my favorite part. Just to have, um, you know, we've been friends since we were like five years old. Mm-hmm. So just to, you know, to have something, a brand, a podcast or whatever, I think that's honestly my my favorite part. Just with somebody that's, you know, I consider a brother who has the same mindset, just like Rue, Rue and TB and his other, you know, the, co- the co-founders. Um, Yo, don't make me just, cry, bro. No, I'm just for real. It's just... <laughs> I don't know. It's just cool. It's just cool to see from 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 the bottom up, like just talking about it. It's just all. I don't know. It all. It's all been a build up to this point from five years old because we talk. Yeah. <laughs> we talk every yeah. day. Yeah. For yeah. for tw- almost um, how old are we? Almost twenty one years. Yeah. So just to have something, you know, have a platform and then have it impact impact people the way it has impacted people. And I know the only direction to go is up mm-hmm. like Rue and tv say always trend upward see i bet you thought yeah, I didn't sure. know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> always trend upward i think i think that's my favorite part favorite part is you know doing it with my bro and then just you know impacting impacting lives i think that's the that's the key for me i don't want to this is not for me uh-huh. You know, I want to do it so you know to leave a lasting impact. Like, imagine walking on the street and they like, oh, that's that's the CEO of TB Rue. Like, let me get a pick, or that's cloth talk. Oh shit. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's just yeah. Exactly. That's a that's a great. I think that's a great feeling. So that's probably my my favorite part. That's awesome, man. Love you too. Yeah. <laughs> I I uh yeah for me you know that's that's it's like the icing on the cake for me to to be here with Jay Nice and do and doing this podcast because this is not work for us like we do this all the time like there's probably like 10 podcasts we miss a week because we just be having random conversations and like talk about random things that stuff that record, could be recorded so. yeah <laughs> right. um so on top of that uh for me it's like i don't know it was so such like an adrenaline rush and like a dopamine hit to have an idea started with just like a thought and you know oh like we could do a podcast like you know we talk about different things and then but actually executing on it and seeing that it's working and resonating and like we we have a, a strict process now and so we're pushing out content consistently and you know we're not we're not going to run into any roadblocks from here on out it's just like all discipline you know collaborating and just putting out more content and being innovative like Mm -hmm. we've already succeeded in the idea and I get goosebumps talking about it because that just proved to me, like I can do all of us can do anything we want to do. Right. It really didn't take that much. Like it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but if you look at it, we just took a bunch of baby steps to get here. Like we started out with a conversation. We started writing it on paper, and then we got together and like recorded our first video. Actually, before that, got equipment. We got microphones and started mm-hmm. ordering stuff on Amazon and like getting our little setup together. You know, what are we going to talk about? What are our topics? What's our brand? Getting the logo done. Like, we just did it piece by piece, baby step after baby step, and it, yeah. it's working. Like it's here. Like we're doing it. It's like yeah. that, that, that <laughs> part to me is one of my favorite parts. Cause I don't know. There were so many years growing up where I was just like, Oh damn, I wish I could do that, but I don't have the time or mm-hmm. oh, I wish I could do that, but I don't have the money. And we're to the point now where it's like, fuck all that. Right. I don't care how much money I have. I don't care yeah. how much time I have. I'm going to do it mm-hmm. yeah. and it's going to work. And it, exactly. to see it go through like that, that's, that's, it's, it's one of the most, you know, awesomest parts for me, uh, you know, ha- owning your own brand and being an entrepreneur <laughs> and making content. So I think it's like, it's like what, 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 uh, what Rue said earlier, um, you, it all like, like you and will just now it all starts with an idea just, but it's, 
what separates us, you know, I'm not saying that we're like better than anybody because that's obviously, you know, that's not the case. But what separates mm-hmm. us is that you, you actually take that idea and act on it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That's just take the idea, you run with it, and that's a good feeling. Like, bro, and then you look back, you're like, damn, why was I ever scared? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. It took us like years. To like get started. Oh, what are people gonna say? Oh, yeah. the first video. I hate my voice on camera. <laughs> exactly. like, I hate how I look on camera. Right. Yeah. Bro, you realize, like, literally, it's literally like a week or two after you start whatever your goal or your ambitions are. You're like, damn, why the hell was I scared? Yeah, who this cares? shit is not that bad. Like, it's actually fun. I'm exactly. actually happy doing this exactly. already. Like. It doesn't even matter what happens to this podcast or this brand. Like, I'm happy doing this stuff already. So I feel like we've already won, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. You'll look back at me like, damn, like, I wish I started earlier because this shit is easy now. Like, I don't Facts. even know why I was scared in the first place. Facts. But, yeah. Um, so I think those are our answers. Uh, we, unfortunately, do have to wrap up eventually. So we want to <laughs> get to what's next for TB um and the tv brand like what what do you guys have coming up do you have uh anything you guys are shooting for that people can look look out for yeah, in the future? definitely everybody right now can tap in with our merch 100 percent tap in with the merch um right now we kind of have a sweatsuit out like this that's top bottom um a lot of our products are unisex for men and women we have stuff ranging from shirts hoodies sweaters fleece you know leggings joggers um you know just to say just to say the least um all different messages and imagery without the clothing you know check that out our website our instagram really been doing great with our instagram and our twitter and our website on just displaying the different products and merchandise with models um up next for us you know we're gonna come with a lot more merch expanding our catalog trying a lot of different items out we want to get into accessories you want to try different colors different types of items that we haven't tried um yet we want to get more stuff out for the ladies, um, you know, stuff that's, you know, exclusive for them, especially with summer coming out right now. You know, some high waisted stuff, some crop tops, um, you know, some more casual kind of going out wear for the men. Um, mm-hmm. You know, something that you got a date, you want to go to the club. OK, we got something for you. Throw that on. <laughs> you know. And then if, you know, like maybe you just want to put a wristband on or who knows, maybe even some socks or some type of hat like we want to have that for people too and then um um what else this next is kind of right now we're really in our warm market of the baltimore area um i live in philly so you know we really want to expand um we want to expand we want to stomp the ground on philly um Mm -hmm. really make a name for ourselves here and you know pretty much right now take over the whole east coast new Mm -hmm. york new jersey delaware Massachusetts, Canada, Virginia, um, you know, just kind of take over Pennsylvania, other parts of Pennsylvania, D.C., take over this area, you know, mm-hmm. like take over the area, get our foot in the door there, um, get ambassadors, start working with different types of people, wear our clothing, you know, get ambassadors at different colleges. That's an easy way, um, you know, to just spread word of mouth of the, of the business, getting ambassadors at different colleges, whether it's a temple whether it's a Towson, a UMD, a Stevenson, a Howard University, a Georgetown, NYU, Mm -hmm. um, Rutgers, you know, UConn, anything, just touching on that. And then um, also having more events. So, you know, having events like we did a TB Fest with local artists to come out and showcase their talents. We had a master class with brands like TB Till Infinity and Cloth Talk Podcast that could come and talk about their journey and, expand and network and gain more customers so having more events like having more events like that having some pop-ups some more you kind of you know like lucrative and creative pop-up events so just really into all of that we were trying to do all of that all of that this year um starting next month in march so everybody should just be on the lookout for that check out our website uh, follow mm-hmm. us on our instagram tap in with us on twitter we do a lot of great stuff on twitter right now for black history month Every day we're pushing out a quote that resonates with the same philosophies as TB that a great black leader from the from the past and current has stated within their life. So, you know, check that out for us and tap in with us, support, 
get some merch. If if not, you could shoot us an email or something, or just tell us how we resonate with you or what, if you like what we're doing. And yeah, I'm looking forward to touching more people, a lot more clothing drives, touching the youth, talking to the youth, inspiring more people, and just doing that. And I'm also looking forward to collaborating with Cloth Talk Podcast a lot more too. Yes, sir. That's on the list. <laughs> That's on the list. You already know this on the way. <laughs> Yeah, man, we we know you guys are gonna kill it. Um, Definitely, you guys, you guys just have the recipe, and it's it's only up from here uh, for yes, you guys. So we're, we're looking forward upward. to see to see that growth and that journey. Um, and we know you guys are gonna continue to kill it. So if you're looking to upgrade your closet, go check out TB. Yes, All the sir. links will be down below. Tap down with always trending upward. Always trending <laughs> upward. You see the you see the logo. You see the trend. That's where it comes from. So upgrade the closet. You've heard it here first. Um, any any parting words before we uh, sign off? Um, Jalen, Will, you guys, my bros, thank you all for the opportunity. Um, and you guys just keep doing what you're doing. You all are doing something great. Um, I tap in with you guys. I like the content. Like I said, it's a lot of breaking bread. What me and Jalen used to do back in the day. So keep doing what y'all are doing, man. Thank you for the opportunity. I really want to see you all continue to expand and grow. I want to continue to keep seeing y'all have new people on here. Mm-hmm. I want to see y'all in different places. I want y'all to get back to putting the face-to-face stuff out a little bit. <laughs> like when Jalen, when you visit Will and he visit, he come back. And I want y'all to do, like, mix that in. That was stay yeah. tuned. You know, stay mix tuned. that in. I want to see that from y'all. I want to see y'all venture to different places, travel different places. That, like, take a trip, cloth talk trip. Mm-hmm. And y'all just, like, go somewhere and – impromptu conversations and whatnot like i want to see y'all do that i really want to see y'all grow so just really thank you all for the opportunity um thank you all for supporting tb till infinity again merchandise and you know even thinking thinking of me to get us on the podcast um i look, envision look you I know got. one yes sir <laughs> You yes, already sir, that, know that Till Infinity cap. Go get yours. Man. <laughs> I had it ready. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I I envision one day, you know, like y'all y'all going to have y'all y'all going to have your own y'all going to have your own building, your own suite, your own huge studio, and we just going to come in there, man, and you know, just talk about look back how we had this conversation and just you know break bread and mm-hmm. all our progress and whatnot and, and celebrate that, you know, and yeah. yeah. Look, looking forward to it, bro. It's gonna, yo, it's it's so exciting, man. I, I, it's so exciting, um, and we're we're all ready for it. Um, but thank you for the advice. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, we appreciate the the constructive feedback because mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, people when they're giving feedback or stuff, they're like, oh yeah, I liked it, or you know, mm-hmm. oh it was good. It's like we can't do nothing with that. Like, right. We need we need more. So right. we really uh, appreciate that. A hundred percent. And likewise, that's what I I like y'all to, to give to me. And Jalen sometimes has told me like what products he like to see us do or what he likes or what he don't. That's what we got to do for each other, man. If we don't mm-hmm. do it for each other, no one else will. So you know right. we we going to critique each other, but at the same time we going to give each other our flowers because we are doing great things and we just going to uplift each other. So that's that. Right, right. Yeah, man, absolutely. You've given us a lot of good ideas. I like the, we might have to make a CTT, Cloth Talk Travels. Oh, <laughs> bro, that'd be great, bro. Yo, be, we already got great, a, a lot of, a lot of what Ruth said, we've already, you know, we've had conversations. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> Traveling, it's a lot. Uh-huh. I think we have a lot in the works as well. Um, Definitely confirms that we got to do what we got to do for the yeah. next couple yeah. months. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the, like, the, like the like the shoot like the Super Bowl the Super Bowl tomorrow Super Bowl yeah. tomorrow whatever y'all had a live stream or IG live during halftime talking about halftime shows you never know. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just I just thought of something. <laughs> y'all could have I'm so serious. Y'all could have impromptu cloth talks like Instagram lives like. It don't got to be third, like 10 minutes. Maybe y'all want to just, just go 10 minutes and, and touch on the topic real quick. Yeah. Like when random yeah. like stuff happens, that's crazy. And everybody's talking about it. Like, boom, Cloth Talk Podcast just went live and y'all talking about it. That would be I'll, hard. I'll tap in to hear what you guys had to say. Yeah. That would be hard. That would I'll, be throw hard. Some, I'll throw some comments in there. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, we might have to add Rude to the Club Talk team, man. He's, he's hey, got too man. many good ideas, bro. <laughs> hey, man, I'm a jack of all trades, man. We have to do it all, bro. Yeah, yeah, we see. We see. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah, we have we we definitely got a lot in the works, and I know TB does too. I said I said uh, we'll be in a different situation in five, ten years, but. 
I think we'll be in a different situation this by the end of 2022, to be honest. A hundred percent, bro. A hundred percent. And with that, thanks again to Rue and TB to no Infinity problem, for of joining course. us. This was a great episode, if I do say so myself. Um, and yeah, this was, uh, oh, like Will said, don't forget, drop a like, subscribe, comment. We want this. How much, how many likes we want on this video? We want, let's say 45. Yeah, we give, us, give him a 40, 45 piece. Y'all talking about 45. Let's do a hundred because TV, <laughs> yeah, TV, we got the, we got the YouTube too. So y'all subscribe to Claw Talk and then y'all subscribe, subscribe to us. And then y'all going to get, y'all going to get our video to, let's say, 50 likes or get our page 50 likes because we're not really on we're not big on there yet like these guys and we're going to get this we're going to get this video to 100 likes i would i'll, I'll take that, that y'all y'all heard it here 100 likes 100 Let's likes give us 100 likes and who knows who knows what could happen we already we already planned a what one-on-one we'll say he's gonna beat me at one-on-one basketball <laughs> Yeah, we got we got a lot of bets. Oh. We're, we're making a bet every uh every video. Okay, so we're giving okay. out free food, fucking one on one basketball. Yo, we gotta do a hundred <laughs> okay. likes. If we, if this video get a hundred likes, then I don't let's even know. We'll, person, we'll personally buy you some TV merch. We will personally throw, buy you some let's TV throw, merch. We, some TV merch, and we and we throw a celebratory party just cause. Yeah, do yeah. A hundred likes, and we going up. <laughs> yeah. The club's going, going up. up. For sure. <laughs> yes, sir. Clap it up for Aneru TV to Infinity LLC. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for being here. That's the end of this episode. Yes, sir. Y'all take it easy, man. Cloth Talk. Appreciate y'all.